What's crack a lacking, everybody? Mighty smart guy, Matt Sapal here, Chief Distribution Officer and Senior Board Counsel of PHP Agency, here with my co host, first generation cash flow millionaire and board counsel of PHP, hailing to you from Houston, Texas. Rodolfo, I'm fired up today. This is episode 34. Who is our guest today on the PHP podcast? Matt, today is going to go viral. I'm telling you, <laughs> today is going to go viral. We have the one and only, one of the fastest ever people to go from zero to $900,000. I believe that today is going to be one of the greatest podcasts we ever had. We have the one and only from California, Ricky Aguilar. All right, What's up, guys? guys? I'm fired up to be here with you guys. I appreciate the invite, man. It's such a blessing and an honor to be with you guys today. 100%, guys. Listen, we're going to talk about so many things today. We're going to talk about our dreams, our goals, our vision for 2022. The most expensive homes because we have the uh, pleasure and luxury of actually visiting some of the most luxurious homes here in our experience at PHP Agency, some of the agent success stories we have in PHP Agency, and some of the top five largest insurance policies ever So it's starting in this episode, 34 of the PHP Podcast, starting in three, two, one, let's go. All right, we are back. Ricardo, Ricky. What's awesome up, brother? to have you on the PHP podcast, brother. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. I can't complain, man. It's uh, the weather's nice. Uh, you know, things are going good. Uh, company's in a great spot. Family's in a great spot. Uh, we're just truly, truly blessed to be where we are today. So, uh, so uh, Ricky, people knows you, right? People know you as a, one of the top guys in the company. People know you as a, because you're also a valuetainment uh, uh, podcast. Yes. But there uh, might be some people who don't know your story. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. There might be some people who don't know your story. They might be thinking because they see you with the glasses and uh, with the shave and everything. May, they might be thinking that you've been doing insurance for many, for many, many years, maybe 20 years. So why don't you tell us your story, who you are, how you got started in the business? Tell us about you. Yeah, of course. So uh, originally we're from Naranjo de Chila, Michoacán, Mexico. That's where my family's from in, in Mexico. It's central Mexico, central, central southern Mexico. Um, uh, my, my family, uh, you know, obviously migrated here. Um, my, my parents are, my dad was an entrepreneur since I was a kid, hardworking man. Uh, all his brothers and his, and his, and his sisters were as well. Uh, along my parents on the, uh, my grandparents on the ranch. So they used to, you know, that they, they slaughtered animals and on my mom's side, slaughtered animals and, and did all that and sold meat and so on and so forth. And, uh, uh, so, you know, lived here, lived here in, uh, in, in California ever since, you know, since we got here, lived here in California. Bakersfield, California, to be exact. And um, I'm very blessed to, to have, you know, uh, have good parents. Uh, grew up, you know, my parents got, went through a divorce. I went through some financial hard times. Uh, you know, uh, ended up moving, you know, go, going to the hood. Uh, financial uh, issues that happened when the market crashed. My parents kind of lost a lot of their businesses and property. And so I ended up moving to the hood. Um, obviously, as you can tell by, you know, you're going through my Instagram now, I'm completely tattooed. Like I have very few parties, parts, parts of my body that are not tattooed. Um, got, started getting in a lot of trouble when I was in junior high. I uh, dropped out of high school my junior year. Uh, did not did not go to college. Uh, ended, up, ended up doing a little bit of time uh, when I was uh, about 19, 20 years old. I, I, I did some time and got out, got into the oil fields. I was in the oil fields for eight years. Um, I did that for uh, eight years. And, and uh, my brother, Alejandro, uh, introduced me to uh, PHP uh, back in 2014. Didn't pay too much attention to him. I said, you know what, bro? I, I'm, a, I'm a worker. I can get anything done. I, I'm, I'm down. I, I have the entrepreneur spirit, but I don't know if insurance is going to be my thing. I just don't know if it's something that I want to do. I don't know if it's something that interests me. Um, I, I'm not Jake from State Farm. And uh, he says, bro, this <laughs> industry, you know, he just kept, he kept pushing it, kept pushing it, kept pushing it. And, uh, and a year later, I went to a big event, PHP big event. It was actually a 007 event in 2015 in uh, Vegas. Uh, I heard both you and Rodol and, and Cipala, Matt Cipala speak. Um, related to a lot of you guys, still did not make the move to go into, uh, to go into uh, uh, insurance. But then, you know, 2016, uh, I'm, I'm facing in a crossroads. Uh, I'm, you know, uh, I have to make some big, 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 big uh, decisions as far as my life is concerned. At that point, I am uh, engaged to my now wife, Erica, um, and uh, work is going good. I, like I said, I was in the oil fields. I was getting ready to take a very, very big position within the oil fields uh, with companies like Chevron, Shell, and Mobile. I was, uh, I, I was involved with them, very honored to have been able to work with them. I learned a lot when I was with them. Um, 
And, and at that point, I had to make a, I had to, I said, you know, it's time. I think I was about 27, 28 years old. I got to make some, I got to make a move. I got to do something different. I feel like my abilities are just being lost. I feel like I'm a drop in the water in a river, you know, where you just, you just get, it just gets lost. And I said, I want to do something big with my life. I want to, I want to do something big. I know I have the capability of doing, it. I know I have the ability of doing it. And, uh, and, and, and January 1st of 2016, um, I said, I'm in, let's go. I'm in boom. Just, you know, just, just jumped all in, quit my job. I had a little bit of money in savings. Just said, let's go. We're, we're, we're doing this. You know, my brother at that time was already making about 20,000 a month. I was asking myself, how have I been in a company for eight years? I'm making good money. I'm making six figures, but my brother's only been with PHP for two years. He's already making $20,000 a month. That didn't make any sense to me. And so uh, that's when I sat down with him. Okay. I told him, show me how this works. Teach me how this works. My younger brother, he showed me. I was in disbelief on how easy it was. Don't get me wrong. Nothing's easy. But the process of, of, of doing the insurance part of it, and I said, I, I looked at Erica, which we were engaged at the time, and I told her, you know what, babe? My younger brother, as you guys are seeing him here, I said, you know what, babe? This is something we got we to gotta, we gotta do. It's something we got to jump on. Let's go. Let's do it. We jumped in. We're very blessed. We're in our fifth year here with PHP. Actually, we're on our sixth year. In April will be our sixth-year anniversary with PHP. And uh, we've traveled all over the world. Uh, we've been able to uh, be able to do so many great things with the company. Uh, we, you know, we're very blessed because of our team that we have. Uh, the last three years, we've been the number one base shop in the country. Uh, we hold multiple records. And it's thanks to your guys' mentorship. You know, being around yourself, Rodolfo, being around Matt, uh, around Patrick, around Hector, Erica del Toro, around uh, 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 Gaitan, uh, uh, Marvin Del Valle, all these great leaders that we have. Uh, completely changed my perspective on life, uh, completely changed the way I see things, uh, and, and completely changed my vision. And so that, that's, that's, I've always been ambitious, but I was, I felt like a Bronco with no guidance. You know, a Bronco is a horse that's beautiful to look at and they're wild, but they don't, you, it, it takes, it takes somebody to break them and make them, make them and guide them. And that's kind of what PHP did to me as a, as a person broke me in a good way, not in a bad way, you know, Saddle broke me and say, hey, you can, you can do, we can guide all this energy, all this vision and mission. We can guide it somewhere. And uh, we've been here ever since. And we're just so blessed to be part of the fastest growing FMO in America, according to Forbes magazine. Ricky, I uh, wanted to ask you too, because you've taken a, a very strong stance in your beliefs on the Valley Entertainment podcast. And obviously, you know, this is the PHP podcast, but what do you, where do you think? the lack of financial guidance and education is in the Latino community because you're, you're a big part of the solution. A lot of people talk about problems, problems, problems. And a lot of these politicians say, well, if you vote me in, you know, I, I think there's a report in New York that 800,000 in New York, 800,000 non-citizens have been given the, the ability to vote. Yeah. Well, you, you know, you can't get upset at that, but you have to go down to the root of things, which, which is these policies that these politicians make matter to us. Mm -hmm. And so, so, you know, without diving too much into that, that, that dark hole, where, where, where do you think the solution could be with us building businesses in the insurance industry in terms of helping change in our communities, even though we may not be politicians or we, or we may not be people in Congress or people in a state or, or Senator type position? Well, what happens, Matt is, and I think that, and I think you can, you know, you, you come from a, you know, immigrant parents, but you know, I know that your families are they're from the Philippines our old folks' families are from El Salvador. He's from El Salvador. You know, we're, we're all immigrants here on this, yeah, on this cool. podcast today. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, so we're from three different countries, three different backgrounds, three different upbringings, three different ways of looking at things. But I will tell you one thing that I, I, I tell my, you know, I was at a family gathering the other day. And uh, uh, we started talking about politics, religion, and money. And one of my aunts automatically wanted to shut down the conversation. She says, we don't talk about those things. Yeah. It's very, It's taboo. And I think the problem, the, the problem, Matt, is not really the politicians. It's really that the minority household, at least I can say with us in the Hispanic community, in the Mexican community, mm -hmm. we don't want to talk about the most important things. Nobody wants to talk about religion because it ends up in a fight, according to them, because it cannot mm -hmm. be no civil discourse. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to talk about politics or money because it's taboo, right? So... The reality is the only reason that we're manipulated as a, com as, a, as a community is not because the politicians are doing the manipulation. Well, they are doing the manipulation, but it's not because necessarily <laughs> yeah. they're right. It's because we're not allowed to talk about it at the household. 
Yeah. They don't want to talk about it. So the, how we're going to make a difference, how I'm making a difference is when I'm in my, in my family household, I just simply tell them, if you don't like it, you can leave. That we're going to talk about these. We're going to talk about religion, money, and politics because those are the things that directly affect our families. Who won the soccer game doesn't matter. Who won the Super Bowl doesn't matter. Who's going to the World Cup doesn't matter. What actress just died doesn't matter. And I don't, and I mean, I don't mean that disrespectfully. We had a few of our heavy Hispanic uh, uh, novelas or soap opera actresses die. That is a bigger topic than who we're voting for, uh, yeah. who we're praying to, and where we're putting our money. And that's yeah. a very sad reality within the Hispanic community. So, yeah. go ahead. Go, go, go ahead, man. Go ahead. Yeah, but, but I, I think that uh, the sad part about financial literacy and financial education mm -hmm. and entrepreneurship is everything you want to know about how to make six figures and seven figures, it's all online. Yeah. It's out there. It's for free. Matter of fact, we're going to be talking about it here on this podcast. We're going to be talking about in this podcast how Ricky went from zero to $900,000 in less than six, what, five years. So even though you've been with us six years, I mean, you, you screamed up the leaders, both you screamed in cash flow, not because somebody's holding you down, but because you wanted to outwork a lot of people. Yes. And so, so we're, we're going to be talking about that, but everything that but you that's, want to that's the beauty of capitalism. Capitalism, capitalism doesn't care what skin color you are, what religion you are, what, what your sexual orientation is. It doesn't care what God you pray to. It doesn't care. Capitalism is such a beautiful system because it allows a person that has a good idea, good work ethic, good vision, a good discipline to be able to achieve whatever goal they want to achieve. Going back to, you know, I don't have a high school diploma. I didn't graduate high school, but now I'm one of the top 1% entrepreneurs of America. It's not because, uh, because of somebody threw a bone at me. It's because I was willing to outwork a lot of people and, and, and take the mentorship from people like both of you guys that said, hey, listen, if you stick around us, we're going to show you how to do this. So capitalism is such a non-biased way of doing things, uh, such a non-biased system that I love it because it doesn't care what my skin color, religion, uh, uh, or God is. Okay, this is uh, our this is our culture book of PHP. It's kind of like our uh, company's uh, yearbook. <laughs> uh, yes, we call it the culture book, right? What 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 company out there ends up making you a hero? Huh. But uh, here's Ricky, Ricky and Erica right there. Look at them, man, superstars. <laughs> and uh, we know all their numbers, all their records that they're broken. First to this, let me read a couple. First first to two hundred thousand income in a month. That's Ricky Aguilar. First to recruit hundred uh, in a base ten months in a row. Ricky and Erica. First 100,000 points in a, in a base, Rick and Erica. Boom. And if you want more, if you guys can QR code there, if you can QR code that at the bottom, if you guys see it, I don't know if you guys see it, but you can QR code that if, if they're zooming in on that. Yeah, we can see it. We can see it. Yeah. Yeah. But this this type of stuff we, we do with our top people in our company. I mean, Ricky, would, would, you, would you disagree that you, if you're a performer here at PHP Agency, if you perform, and we're not talking about like ridiculous performance, but if you're performing, you get in the right meetings, and then with inside those right meetings, you put, you compete with inside those right meetings. I mean, I think in my in my opinion, I've never been treated royal in terms of royal treatment. I've never been treated as royally as a top performer in anything outside of my last what six, for me the last seven years here at PHPAT. What about you? You know, let me tell you a story. It's funny. I was just having this conversation with a few of my guys. Uh, so when I was in the oil fields, what I took care of was a production ring. So you know. And the oil fish, you, see, you guys see sometimes in movies, the pumps that are going up and down. Yeah, yeah. Those are holes. Those are drilled holes. I worked on a rig. I ran a rig. So what ends up happening is that the oil fields are extremely dangerous. Anything can kill you. Everything can kill you. Anything can hurt you. Anything can chop off your hand. You're, you're, talking, about, you're talking about a machine that everything is heavy. Everything is thick. Everything is hard. And everything can damage you and mangle you in a split second. And so in 2000, I don't want to be incorrect, but I believe in 2000 and so wait, this rigging? Yes, yeah, so oil pumps. So I, so you, if you actually type in maybe production oil rigs, minor uh, uh, production oil rigs, oil rigs, you're going to see exactly what uh, what I used to work on. Um, uh, th those are offshore, but maybe the onshore ones. I'm sure there's going to be some. Yeah, go if you go onshore, uh, it, it'll be those are uh, yeah, so. Oh, there's still okay. So something like something like this top yellow one. Uh, I'm sorry, if you go up a little bit more, that, that top yellow and white one to the right in the middle, the middle, like that's something that I worked on. Those are, those are what I worked on. And everything is heavy. Everything is dangerous. Everything is, uh, everything is big. Uh, everything's going fast. 
they're they're working 20 they're, they're 24 hours some of them are 24 mine was 12 hours a day some of them are running 24 hours a day that i mean it's it's a very heavy environment so what i'm getting at is this that I, I, one i think it was 2013 um ironically i i also ran the number one crew for the year so i had the fastest rig times, meaning that we were finishing our jobs much faster than everybody else. The average to finish a well back then was 12 hours. In 12 hours, you would finish uh, uh, fixing a well. So what happens after they drill them, there's so much going on there. A lot of people don't realize what the oil dirt gets in there. So you have to circulate the oil, the dirt out. There's so many things you're going to do to wells to maintain them. I was on the maintenance side of it uh, with, with those rigs. You maintain them with those rigs because you're going down whole thousands of feet. And so I had the, so it would typically take a regular rig, 12 hours to maintenance a hole. I was doing a 9.5. And so, and on top yeah. of that, what did it matter? And by the way, I know it doesn't seem like a lot, but when you add up how many more wells I was doing a year than the other teams. So figure from 12 hours, if I'm doing a nine and a half, I'm saving 2.5 hours per hole. So if you've done it in a week, if you do it in a month and do it a year, I'm doing, I'm, I am maintaining uh, roughly about 30 more holes a year than everybody else is. Right after you kind of add up uh, uh, all the yeah. mathematics yeah, behind it, ago. six days a week and sometimes seven. So when you do the math, uh, and sometimes I was doing them in seven point five hours. So nine point five was my average. That was my average, but I was sometimes doing them in seven point five to eight hours. So I was I was killing them. Uh, and not only that, yes. uh, I had the best. And the reason that you get the, the award is because I also had an immaculate safety record. So not only was I finishing everything fast, and I'm gonna get to my I'm gonna get to my point right now to answer your question. I was doing it in a safe in a safe manner, and, and you know what my reward was? I, they gave me a trophy, and I'm and I'm honored. Don't get me wrong; like I'm thankful. Like I, I guess it could they could have not like given me anything. It couldn't have been bigger. It was a it was it was called a Golden Derrick Award. It could have been bigger than this, right? <laughs> and um, it said, "Good job, Rig Twenty Two, Rig Twenty One." And then they brought us sandwiches for lunch. Sandwiches. 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 That was like big. At least Subway? Did they bring it wasn't some even Subway? Or? It was just sandwiches. And it was a uh, thank you, get your ass back to work. And I'm like, yeah. all right. After Sounds making good. them more money. Millions. Millions. I was putting wells in production much faster than everybody else would. So just figure, Matt, if the average well is producing 10 barrels of oil a day, and I'm putting 30 of them in service faster than everybody else, I'm, I'm producing 300 barrels of oil more a year, uh, you know, bar barrel of oils, uh, let's say it's $120 a barrel. If they're producing 10 times 300, you could do the math. I'm, I'm making them millions of dollars. I but, hope that the sandwiches know, were good. Hey, the, I, I, they were okay. You know, they were <laughs> and it was a good job. Get your ass back to work. And by the way, I'm not ungrateful for it. I fed my family. I paid my bills. I'm not a victim. I'm not going to cry about it. That was my job. I was doing my job and I that, that's it. But here, We've been able to try, you know, I've met, I have right here, I have Kobe Bryant, uh, Kevin Hart, Magic Johnson. We've been to Aruba, paid for by the company. My wife has been to the Europe, paid for by the company. I wasn't able to go on that trip. Jamaica, paid for by the company. Cancun a couple of times. We're getting ready to go to Tulum. We're getting ready to go to Paris and Monaco. Uh, $50,000, uh, $100,000 cash bonuses, uh, $50,000 in, in investment bonuses, uh, not, not including all the bonuses we get for hitting our numbers every yeah. single month. So, it's just crazy what happens here when you perform and you, you outwork everybody else. Do you, Ricky, like, um, you know, you say early, um, because it's amazing your story, the, the things that are just going on with you. You're living the dream. But but how, you know, you mentioned, I used to be a bronco. That's the word I used, right? I used to be a horse, yeah. a bronco. I used to be a crazy. How, what did Patrick and David do I mean, how do they put the saddle to you and they says, you know what, you're crazy, Ricky. You know what? But you can become successful in the insurance industry. What role did Patrick play with you? Oh, major. I, I think that what happens, first of all, you, you have to want to get saddle broken. You have to want to get saddle. Like, you have to want that. You have to know that if you keep going, to, the, the thing about people, like, I'm an Aries and I'm, I'm, a, I'm an Aries and I have ADHD. So it's a bad combination, but it's a horrible combination. It's a good combination <laughs> for disaster. I am the perfect storm. So, um, uh, so what happened is that first of all, I made a decision. I want, I want to be guided, right? I want to because it doesn't matter if you have the best coach in the world. If you don't want to be guided, you're not going to be guided. So I want to be guided. Why? Because I realized that if I did not get a hold of my skills, if then I, if I was not able to refine myself. I was going to end up in the oil fridge for the rest of my life, giving my abilities and skills to somebody that was never going to appreciate them. So when that happened, 
I, I, I looked at Pat and I had a conversation with him and uh, I, I just knew that I could trust him. And he says, listen, I'm going to tell you things you're not always going to agree with. I'm going to tell you things that you might not, not like, but I promise you, you're going to like the outcome. So at that point, point number one is I had to make a decision to want to be broken, saddle broken. And then on, on top of that, then I had to trust because at the end of the day, a trust factor, whether you marry somebody, you're trusting them. So, so then you're like, I don't, I don't know if I could trust anybody. Well, then don't leave your house because when you're driving, you have to trust the next car's not going to hit you. When you're walking on the road, you have to trust the people driving are not going to run you over. So you really do, when you go to work, you're trusting that every two weeks are going to pay you. So subconsciously, you're doing a lot of things out of trust. So this is, it's a little bit on a heavier, on a heavier way, because obviously you're making a big life decision, but, uh, but he was able to work with, they didn't want to change who I was. He lets me be who I am. But whenever I'm kind of getting out of the corral a little bit, like, hey, come here, let me show you this. Let me show you what could happen if you grab this energy and this enthusiasm and you run with it the right way. Well, let me tell you what damage you can do if you go with it the wrong way. So it was always letting me make my decisions based on information that he would give me according to what would happen if I was going the right way or going the wrong way. But it was always on me to make the decision. It was never a dictatorship or you got to do this. It's always been a whole lot of look. If you continue down this road with this energy, this is what's going to go wrong. But if we switch it over and focus over here, this is what's going to go right. So it was it was that played a major role in my life. I love it. By the way, fun fact. Uh, here, here in the uh, culture book, uh, Aries is pretty much number two of all the top successful Zodiac signs really? in the company. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Which one are number you? One. So, so, so 40, 42 is tied with Libra, is the most marketing directors in the company. Okay. Number one is cancer. Cancer, yeah, my uh, wife's a cancer. Wow. From, a, from a VP, stamp VP and up, Virgos. Wow. Nine. Aries, two. Wow. Which one are you? You say, which one are you, man? I'm, I'm Scorpio. Scorpio. Ah, Ceci's yep. a Scorpio. You're yep. a Scorpio. Interesting. There's a lot of Scorpios. So, Scorpios is a solid. Marlene is a Scorpio, I think. Yep. Wow. Sheena, Sheena's a Sheena's a Virgo, but uh, it's kind of like the, one of the funny things we do here, PHP agency. This whole astrology zodiac sign Crazy. type of thing, and you know, however you guys glean into that, you know, it's uh, uh, three interesting things there. By the way, uh, when when I was doing, when I was building, well, I still do. When I do, uh, when I was really coming because I can only afford certain food. Like I got away from Chinese food because I can afford I, I can afford nicer restaurants these days to do my uh, client appointments at or recruiting interviews in. But one of my favorite places to do, I mean, did you guys have a favorite place to do RIs when you were broke? Of course. Yeah, my, of course. Mine was the Chinese food restaurant. Where were yours, Ricky? What was your favorite place to do when you corner, were broke? Corner, different. Corner, we call it a corner bakery. So a lot of people would become known as a, like a Panera Bread. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we have a similar to Panera Bread. <laughs> Name uh, a Cafe Express over here. That's gotcha. what we used to have. The reason why I like doing lunch meetings because you go to these uh, these uh, Chinese food restaurants and the food is cheap for less than five bucks, six bucks. You get yourself a egg foo young and some rice and an egg, egg, and a, and a egg in a roll, <laughs> right? Egg foo young, rice and an egg in a roll. It's not egg roll. It's egg in a roll. And um, on the placemat, they'd have a different Zodiac saying, like you were born the year of the ox, the year of the monkey, the year of the snake, the year of the rooster, right? So, you know, these things are fun. If you guys look into their fun icebreakers, because there's a lot of weird you know, things that, uh, it's like, yeah, I am like that. I, is that really the why? Because I'm born another year, the rooster every year, the whatever. And there's an interesting icebreaker when you're building rapport with somebody with a recruiting interview. Um, here's what, here's what I want to ask Ricky, you're successful. Um, before PHP agency, and I ask this when everybody comes on the podcast before PHP agency, and you're crushing it these days, but before PHP agency was the financial services and insurance industry massively recruiting you to enter its field with all those tattoos and no not even close <laughs> you wouldn't you wouldn't prospect me if i was no way there's no way no no hell no i was i was being recruited to do other things but it wasn't financial services <laughs> no it was not it was not i actually got re, was getting recruited to do a movie as being a, like the villain of the movie uh, ironically what type of movie it, it was a it was a mobster movie that they were watching. Okay, just but, double check it. I just double so, check it. So, uh, uh, yeah. So, but yeah, uh, no, no, nobody, nobody, ever, ever even tried to recruit me. I mean, it Amazing. was never like no other company. Like if you see, you know that that's uh, who's gonna step to this guy? Yeah, that's that's the way I look without my <laughs> sweater on. And uh, yeah, you know, 
Uh, it's no, never, Matt. Never did anybody approach me, no, not even on social media, not in person. I was never prospected to do financial services ever. No way. Okay, now, now after you got your insurance license and the marketplace kind of knows who you and your wife are, are you being not now? Do you have a day where you don't have a solicitation? Oh, no. And, and by the way, now it's not only this industry, it's every industry now. It's it's uh, home, home loans, mortgages, real estate, uh, Forex, crypto, you, man, you name it. Now it's it's coming in from every direction that people are wanting to recruit me to do something else. So, so it's safe to say that PHB agency gave you a platform where your walk of greatness finally got expressed. Absolutely. I, I think it's money. It gave me a chance to really, to really be who I am and, and be able to use those skill sets uh, to be able to, to grow a business without feeling judged, you know, or without uh, saying, Oh, you're not good enough, or you don't have the schooling to do it. I think that's what, that's what really the PH, the platform that PHP really provided for me and my wife to be able to, because my wife is a, uh, from a small town, she used to pack eggs. So it's not like you're talking about two different people that have pedigrees in yeah. financial services. We don't come from that. She used to pack eggs and lived in a small town making $35,000 a year. Now we make that in a week. You know what I mean? So it's not, it's not something that you, where we were destined to become who we are today. It was literally just the grace of God and a blessing to be able to land here with PHP. So I, I want to talk about that between the two of you guys, because everybody sees you now. They see your chapter 35, right? Rodolfo, they see your chapter 35. Right. They, they see your chapter 45, 50, whatever. But they don't see the chapter one. They don't see the chapter two. They don't see the chapter three, the doubt, the disbelief, the naysayers, the own personal self, self that is this true? I mean, Ricky, I remember when you first came on board, you, you, you shared on stage. I didn't get involved in insurance because I don't think that was for white people. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was for white people. You know, it's, uh, insurance, like I, I always, to this day, when I connect insurance, I connected to Jake from State Farm. You know, it's that's the best way I can, you know, um, be, I was, when before I came to Peach I was already making good money. I drove, I, I changed my cars every year. I lived in a nice neighborhood. I, I traveled, I, all of that. It, it wasn't really a racks to riches story for me. Um, so because I already lived a, a decent financial life, I had a lot of friends that obviously naturally would, you know, my friends were solid friends that were not, you know, the people that were also doing good. And uh, me and Erica were kind of the, and I will publicly say it and nobody can really deny it in the city. We were kind of the it couple, right? We were making, you know, she, obviously we were kind of, we were dating shoes with me. Uh, we would go to the club, spend two, three grand, uh, go to Rodeo Drive and go buy name brand. Nothing of that was new to, obviously not at this scale, of, you know, making the money we make now, but for living in a town with 300,000 people and, and you walk into a restaurant, everybody knows your name. Everybody knows who you are. Uh, everybody, you know, everybody, anybody who's anybody knows you. Um, and then switching over to PHP, it was insane how much, how much rejection we got. Wow. It went from, you're the wow. couple, you know, everybody, Thanksgiving, friends, Friendsgiving was at my house. I had a, a house with a big backyard with the pool. So birthday parties were at my house. Uh, uh, you know, anything was at my house. Friendsgiving, the Christmas, Friends Christmas, everything was at my house. Everything. My house was a spot to come to, mm -hmm. to hang out and throw parties. And not a, it wasn't a party house. My house was beautiful, but we had a good time at my house. Every mm -hmm. weekend in the summer, we were at my house. And so to go from that to saying, you know what, I want to join the industry. And, and, and uh, it was difficult for me. And my, I mean, you went from being the first ones invited to every party to looking at Snapchat and realizing there's birthday parties you're no longer invited to. Wow. There's concerts you're not invited to. There's, there's baptisms you're not in. Weddings. The people that were your, at your wedding. So what went through your head? What head? How, how did you feel about that? Because I, by the way, how many guys are relating to Ricky right now? Put it in the comment section below. Put it in the live chat. How many guys are relating right now? And also Matt, rejection and all this. Put it in the comment section. Yes. Matt, to ask questions to over, people over yeah. there in the comments. If you Please. have a question to yeah. Ricky. Yeah, he, it, it was. It, I'm not going to lie, Matt. It was. It was. It was horrible. Hmm. Because because you really think that these people are going to stick it out with you. Think or thin. By the way, one of my, one of my favorite uncles, closest uncles, like a, like a, like a father figure to me, we had a falling out because of it. So, so I, this happened with family. I had cousins that followed me. I had cousins telling my agents, 
oh yeah, Ricky, Ricky and Alejandro, my cousins. I, I'll, I'll never do that PHP thing. My cousins, my blood cousins. Yeah. I, the word that my agents would show me, like, hey, bro, is this your cousin? So I have, I have those stories. And, and by the way, keep in mind, I'm the oldest one of the cousins, already mm -hmm. making money, already driving the cars of the year. Uh, a brand new, already, it's not like I was trying to prove to everybody that I was going to make it. I was already doing very well. And even then, the rejection, the cold shoulder, the neglect, uh, it was, it was, it felt like, it felt, you almost feel like, like you came out on Dateline for being a sexual predator. <laughs> like, bro, they're like, marked. Like, right. they're marked for, I'm like, bro, I just changed my career. Yeah. You guys, I like, you caught me on Dateline to catch a predator. Yeah. Like, that's how you feel. You know what I mean? Like, it, the, the, the high level of rejection and, and a high level of, you walk into a restaurant, and the waiters, you say hi to you, don't say hi to you no more. They just sit you down and act like nothing. Obviously, that's not the case anymore. Yeah. But, yeah. But it was insane. I mean, it was from one minute to the next that happened. It was so crazy. So it wasn't Ricky, gradual. It was did you, did you doubt? Okay, so what did you doubt more? Did you doubt PHP? Did you no. doubt Alejandro? No. Did you doubt Ricky and Erica and, and Gaetans and PBD? Or did you doubt did you doubt more of the reason why people are reacting? That yeah, that was it. I just didn't get it. Like I never doubted PH. I at that point when I started with PH, I didn't doubt PH. I didn't doubt this work. I didn't doubt you guys because you were already, you know, people that I was talking to at the time. I didn't doubt P PBD. I didn't doubt any of it. I didn't even doubt myself. I just, I was just a major disbelief that it was happening. That was it. No doubt in me, no doubt in you guys, no doubt in the company or in our coach or our CEO, no or in the industry. It was just a, it was a big slap in the face more than anything. And you know why it was a bigger slap in the face, Matt? Because I truly believed in this. That's why it was a bigger slap in the face. It wasn't a slap in the face. He was like, I wonder if this works. No, because I believed in it so much. And I knew that this was going to go somewhere so much. I couldn't believe that people couldn't see it. But can I tell you something? Really can I tell you something, Ricky? Of you know, it happens uh, at all levels. It doesn't happen necessarily only at the beginning. You know, there is a video, Matt, if you can find it, about Elon Musk. Elon Musk, oh, when yes, uh, he, yes, his main, yes. uh, he, yeah. what do you call it? His main, the people are going to, he's expecting the people that are going to, from NASA, to validate all the work that he's doing. And even at his level, everybody's doubting Elon Musk. So I don't think it happens. It happens to any level. Until now, I believe that you have some people who doubt you. Oh, 100%. 100%. It's, it, it, uh, now it's, now it's, uh, you're dealing you're not so much now you're dealing now you're dealing with oh you think you're too good oh uh, you make more money yep. oh like bro you were the one telling me this was not gonna work when i started you know now you're telling me oh you know, i think i'm too good rocketry bro. business for decades yeah who say about you that you don't know what you don't know well i, I suppose that's true of anyone how can anyone know what they don't know <laughs> But, when uh, critics say you can't do this, your answer to them is... We've done it. He's done it in partnership with NASA, which has given SpaceX technical advice and a contract worth this idea. Neil uh, Armstrong, yeah. Gene Cernan have both testified against commercial space flight in the way that you're developing it. And I wonder what you think of that. I was very sad to see that uh, because those guys are, yeah. You know, those guys are heroes of mine, so it's really tough. You know, I, I wish they would come and visit and, and see the hardware that we're doing here. And, and I think that would change their mind. They inspired you to do this, didn't they? Yes. And to see them casting stones in your direction. Woo! It's difficult. Woo! Did you expect them to cheer you on? So they're hoping they would. Uh, what are you trying to prove to them? What I'm trying to do is, is to make a, a significant difference in, in space flight and, and, and help make space flight accessible to, to almost anyone. And I, I, I would uh, hope for as much support in that direction as we, as we can receive. Wow. wow. <laughs> you know what phrase got into me that he says? You know, I wish they would come and see it. 
You know the critics and everything. Come to BOM, baby. Come to, Come to BOM. I wish, I wish they would see the faces of the families that we help. I wish they would see the family, all the families that we help. You know, like we're giving, I'm giving my brother a $45,000 check last month. I wish they would see it. I wish they would see the families that Ricky has been helping. I wish they would see, you know, when uh, we were talking about your opening offices, everything, Matt. I wish all the critics that will come and see how many families and how many people you're changing their life by opening offices and helping other people. That's what I got from it. You Man, know, you know, emotional. You know, you know what the crazy part about that video is that a lot of people don't know that in the early 90s, Elon Musk had already sold the company for $400 million. Elon Musk was no longer doing this for money. The guy wanted to make a difference. I, at four hundred, he made four hundred million dollars. He sold this company four hundred million dollars in the nineties. That's equivalent to maybe like a billion right now. The guy was already rich. He could have retired. He was done. Then why did he keep going? When you want to make a difference that bad, and you want to build a legacy for your family, and you want to impact people in a positive way, there's nothing that can stop you. And I just, and I, I, I just, when I watched that video and you guys have no idea how many times I had to watch that video when I first started, because I knew that my purpose was bigger than just money and yeah. the rejection I was going through. I had, I used that video to keep me alive in the business so many times at the beginning. It's crazy. Yeah. You know, none of my cousins, I'm Phil, I'm Filipino. So that means I have a big family outside of my mother who loves what we're doing because you know, my mother's been there from day one. Dad, not so much. Um, cousins, not so much. Matter of fact, all, all my all my cousins uh, laughed at me when I got the Marines and said, "No, now you get an insurance, Sergeant in the Marines. You're gonna get involved in insurance." All laughing at me. It's the the crazy part is, 20 years later, their lives aren't any better. No. You may, maybe the first five years or ten years because you know you go through that first phase in your in your 20s. And they come out the gates fast because, you know, they have the solid income, they got the job, you know, they got the, the, the cash and credit faster than you because, you know, in the beginning of business, you, you kind of like take, take a quick slump. And it's in this slump that you kind of doubt, okay, wh what am I doing here? Uh, how come I'm not going as fast as they are? I remember going to a funeral and they came and rolling to the funeral with Range Rovers and Mercedes Benz. And I was rolling in with a 10 year old Cadillac Seville. I could barely pay 500 bucks a month car payment on. But I just kept at it, man. I just kept at it. Just kept believing in it. I parked down the street so people wouldn't see what kind of car I rolled up in a, into the funeral. Wow. And so I had my son with me. Ruben was with me. And uh, just, just coming to this funeral, everybody, I mean, you know, the button where you you lower the Range Rover and you know, you're doing that kind of kind of flexing in front of me. What kind of car are you driving? Ah, it's a Cadillac's down the street. I didn't tell them what year, what make. But fast forward, they got, these guys got involved in business. They had challenges in their industry, but because the benefit of us being at PHB agency is having a visionary CEO and a C-suite team that sees a lot of things, a lot of distractions may come our way, and they're able to put them at bay. They're able to address a lot of distraction issues. So therefore, we focus on what we do best, which is building agencies. And make a long story short, a lot of my friends and cousins, you know, too prideful right now to ask. I had Marines that told me, hey, so Paul, in 30 days, we'll see you back on the base. Zero chance. Wow. I'm not back in the basement. 20 years later, because they decided to choose their route, I chose my route. My life's a whole lot different than they are. And the, the, the thing is, if you think it's just about money, if you thought your desire to go in business is solely about money, they'll talk you out of it. Your doubters will talk you out oh, of it. Oh, 100%. You're damn selfish. 100%. 100%. You, know what, you know what the video about Elon Musk too? Even though people throw rocks on uh, Elon Musk, whatever they can say, but deep inside, you knew or you know the guy's going to make it and he's going to make it big. Some people say, oh, my gosh, you're doing that, Ricky. You're doing that, Zapala or Patrick, but David, you know, or myself. You know, I'm an immigrant from El Salvador. Yeah. People know. I'm telling you, whoever is listening to this, people know that this is going to be the company of the destiny. People know. Whatever they can say. They can say a lot of things out there, but they know that we're going to be a number one company out there. They know we're gonna be a number one company. You know, it's crazy that you say that. Uh, uh, that was crazy with that, Rodolfo, because uh, Michael Jordan just came out with uh, you know um, uh, that documentary, um, The Last Dance, uh -huh. 
And so many basketball players are now coming out criticizing it, including his partner, Scottie Pippen. Yeah. Like, bro, Michael Jordan is worth $1.5 billion. You're worth $20 million on a good day. What the hell are you talking about? Same thing with so many other players that didn't like Michael Jordan. So it just goes, you know what, you know why I say that? And it brings me so much peace because it doesn't matter that you're going to be the best in the world. Somebody's going to have to say something. Somebody's going to have something to say about it, no matter if, what. If you they are saying things about Michael Jordan, they're not going to say things about you. Yeah, and he already proved himself. Yeah, yeah. Best basketball player ever existed. He still got trolls. He still got haters. People that, and by the way, that I was reading, we were reading the book. Uh, we were reading the book uh, uh, by, by Tim Grover, which is relentless. And it was talking about how all the all the all the players on the Bulls, when Jordan was with them, they all had higher contracts because the team was doing good. Yeah. So when he retired, and other teams started recruiting those same guys, they were not getting the same out of them, meaning that they were not performing the same way without Jordan being around because he held them to a higher standard. This man is standards help the people around them become multi-millionaires and made other teams pay more money for them that they were worth. They were overpaying for these players simply because they were on the bulls and they still have the audacity to come out and criticize a man that allowed them to pave the way for their legacies. Yeah. So if that's going to happen to Michael Jordan, you best believe it's going to happen to you. Yeah. I, I want to bring this up real quick because you know, I want to talk about the PHP platform real quick. And by the way, PHP platform, we've got a manual to teach our guys how to build an agency. Okay, this is our manual, how to sit. And by, we right, got, right next uh, to you all the time, baby. Yeah, 100%, right? <laughs> and in addition to that, uh, uh, this is before we became counsel, uh, Ricky. Uh, we, we, we came up with a manual on how to sell life insurance. Yeah. So oftentimes people say, right, right, my man, that's it, right? So this is a manual on how to sell life insurance. Uh, my good friend, John Mason, just got invited to uh, uh, our new, uh, New Hampshire to talk to a company oddly ran by Filipinos in IT and uh, make a long story short, he's educating this company about how to create a proper retirement plan. So we, we got players. So people sometimes they look at our plan, but they doubt the technical expertise of our guys. We got people that know how to sell life insurance. Rodolfo, how much annuities have you written in the last 60 days, brother? How many? How, 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 much, how much total volume? Total value close to 1.5 million personal, last, right? Personal, yes, yeah, that's it. To and through the holidays, so we know how to build an agency and we know how to sell life insurance. Boom, boom. Okay, we we have, we have a manual. And for people that are in PHP agency, uh, we have act. You just, you just need to get access to information. You need access to local training. You need access to management. These are available to you uh, through Bamboo for you to order, and uh, PHP will gladly send these out to you. Okay, so. Ricky, I want to ask you this question because oftentimes people say, well, you know, come over here, come over here. Let's sell insurance over here, Ricky. We got a higher contract for you over here, Ricky. You know, you're coming over here, you're, yeah, that's 75%. By the way, I'm at a 75% contract. I used to be at 130% contract, but never made $1.8 million a year ever before in my life because I had to buy leads and, and was relegated to dinner seminars and, and mailing to five different zip codes. What keeps you here at PHP even, even though we don't have the quote unquote highest linear contract but we have an overall compensation there's a difference between commission level and compensation package what keeps a ricky and erica aguilar you know I, i've i've talked to guys from other companies multiple times they hit me up because i'm curious not not curious because i want to leave curious because i'm like what are you selling people on what ideology i'm going to tell you a story two years ago three years ago when i'm in my second year in php I'm making about 300 grand and no, uh, about, yeah, about almost 300 grand. This guy hits me up from one of these high contract companies and says, if you come with us, you'll be making a million already. I said, how long have you been with them for five years? Why aren't you making a million? How much are you making? 350. Why aren't you making a million already then? Oh, you know, this and that. I saw, and by the way, he's like one of their big guys. He's one of their big guys. Ironically, I spoke to him last year. And he says, I see that you're killing it. We still follow each other on Facebook. I said, bro, how much are you making? 375. And I said, you already know how much I'm making. I'm at over 900,000. I said, you know what's crazy, bro? And I literally told him this, and I'm not going to expose his name or else I would show you guys. I said, if I would have followed you, 
three years ago when you told me that I would have been making a million with you already, I would be where you're at. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't be where you're at. I would be below you. I said, I'm so glad. And I mean this in the utmost respect, with the utmost respect that I didn't listen to you and I stuck it out with my coach. Because now I make what you what you make in a year, I make in a quarter. And 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 I, I and by the way, out of the 900,000, 800,000 of it is override, passive income, meaning that I don't touch that those clients. My team does. And you, the day you stop selling, you stop making money. I'm building a business. You're self-employed. It's very different. I'm a real entrepreneur. Very different. Yeah. And obviously, he left me on scene. What I'm getting at is this, that if there is something that's unparalleled about PHP is a mentorship and the builder's mentality. That is something that no, you, you cannot, you cannot think that because somebody offers you something more or higher, that it's going to come with everything that we come with. Another company doesn't have a PPD. Other company doesn't have you guys as a leader. Other companies don't have blueprints. And I asked him, oh, going back, let me go back. How do you train your people? We don't train them. They learn on their own. What the hell? I said, so you grab a guy like me that dropped out of high school, has never opened a book previous to PHP, and you expect me to sell life insurance? I would never make it under you. Because you don't train and you brag about it. You don't have trainings and you brag about it. You don't have accountability and you, you think those are good things. And I said, no wonder lazy people go with you guys. They don't mm -hmm. want to be accountable. They don't want to be trained. They don't want to listen. They want to do whatever they want to do. No wonder nobody makes money with you guys. But high contract. Yep. But in return, what do you get? No training, no mentorship, no guidance, no nothing. I will not trade what I have here at PHP for the world. And by the way, I've been offered a lot of things at my level from multiple different companies. And I'm friends with a lot of artists in the Spanish world, with a lot of producers, with a lot of artists. Hey, this and that, I want you to help me run this company. Well, I'll give you this, I'll give you this, I'll give you that. I'm good, bro, because I will not get a PBD or this kind of leadership anywhere I go. That, By the way, that's the last answer, Matt. <clears throat> that's the last answer that I, that I was going to say. Because um, that what you just say is the leadership. My opinion, 100%. Guys, there is products out there. There is uh, policies out there. There is contracts out there. There are couple, there is so many things out there. But everything falls and rise into leadership. That's it. It's leadership. Leadership is the most, why do people, why so scarce? It's a scarce to find a Ricky. It's a scarce to, to find a Matsapala. There is not a lot of Patrick Bet Davis out there. You know, for me, like I said, you know, I used to work, you, you, your background, uh, Ricky, you used to work in the oil rigs. Matt Zapata used to have all the contracts in the world. He, he was in the top in the world doing um, insurance, investing, doing seminars, investing hundreds of thousands of dollars every single year. And it's still not making, not becoming financially independent. This company has leadership. That's the reason why we are, I'm an immigrant from El Salvador working at Sears. That's what I used to do. I used to work at Sears as a security guard, AKA janitor. This company pays me millions of dollars, not because of the policies, not because of the contract, it's because of leadership. You say it, Ricky. Everything start, everything open, uh, everything uh, is built and falls upon leadership, always. Guys, I want to- What else do you have over there? I want to switch gears here. I, I want to talk about some things that just jack us up. And um, I know part of the business plan is uh, vision boards. And uh, I want to talk a little bit about a lifestyle. I want to talk a little bit about things that may stir us up. I don't know. Are you guys, are you guys more house guys or car guys? Both. <laughs> One, if you had to pick one That's or the, the other. That's the answer. Both, Matt. Both. If you had to reduce it down to one. Both. Yeah, I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can reduce it down to one. Really? It's, it's, what's it's, the point of having a two million dollar car well, and okay. two hundred thousand dollar house? Matt, what's, the point what's of better? A two million dollar house with the twenty thousand dollar car. I just I can't see the combination. What, there. What's better, your right arm or your left arm? <laughs> Both. Both. <laughs> but I'm right handed, so there. my right arm is better. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, that's so a good I, point. That's a good point. If what I was to reduce there? it down, if I was to reduce it down to the ridiculous, I'd say house. I yeah, believe probably you. a house. You're yeah. smart. You're because a smart money guy. It's your sanctuary, man. 
You're a smart money guy. I mean, I mean, okay, we, we've been broke. We have all been broke. And now we've got cars. I mean, Rodolfo, what, what type of exotics you have, man? What, what type of exotics you got? I have Lamborghini, yellow Lamborghini. I, I used to be a kid. I used to play with this yellow Lamborghini, a control remote. And I dream about having a yellow Lamborghini. I have Maserati too. Um, that's what I have. So, so Lambo yeah. and a Lambo in a in a Maserati. But yeah. I want you to post more pics with your car, bro. I want you to post because it's a go, sick ride. Go to my Instagram. I have it. Oh, okay, okay. Here, here. Okay, hold on, hold on. I'm, I'm, I'm there right now. Let me, uh, let me, let me, uh, let me share here. Come on, baby. By the way, there is some new things coming up soon. Okay. Okay. Uh oh. Well, we'll uh oh. Some uh -oh. new things coming up. There you go. Uh -oh. That's that's the that's the lab right there. And I'm feeling and, and guys, it's not necessarily about the, the car, good. man. It's about having your dreams come true, man. That's the thing about it. It's having your dreams come true. Okay, so you got the Lambo, you got the Maserati. Ricky, what you got, brother? So uh obviously my first one was a Lamborghini. Uh, that that I had got. Uh, if, as a matter of fact, there it is. It's right there to the left. To the if, if you go down a little bit, that was my first Lambo. Well, go up. Yeah, that. Yeah, I, I take it in the dirt, bro. You know me. I don't care. I take it in the <laughs> dirt. It's a Lamborghini with a guy. That was my first one. That was my first exotic. I actually had a Bentley before, but this is my first. I took it to the ranch, man. You know me, bro. I'm I'm a I'm from the ranch. You know we're family. We're immigrants. We're we're ranchero. So I took it to the. Ranch. <laughs> I can't believe I did that. <laughs> I'm, I'm already seeing all the dust. You got, you got to wipe uh, it yeah, all I off. I have my truck. I have lifted truck. Uh, GMC Denali. But uh, and then I have a uh, right now we have and then after that I bought a Rolls Royce. Um, I don't nice. Know picture. I bought a Rolls Royce. That's my wife's G wagon. Bought her a G wagon. Paid about 150 for that one. Uh, she was wanting that one, so I got her a G wagon. And now I I just bought myself a V12. Bentley uh, Continental GT, uh, yeah, it's if you go up a little, I think it might be, yeah, if you go up a little bit, the actual picture of it, it's a, uh, but yeah, there it is. I, I think I passed it. You went you done a little bit slower, uh, a little slower, a little slower, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. It should be come there. It is right there. I bought my mom that Lexus, by the way. Um, so that's my. I just bought this one. It's a V12 uh, Bentley Continental GT Speed. It's freaking awesome. I freaking love that car. Yeah. Uh, I love that car. And I bought my mom that that lexus truck i had bought her one before but i bought her that truck um so uh she wanted one real bad i said mom let's go i so i bought my dad my mom a uh, lexus my dad a brand new honda and my in-laws a brand new truck so uh so yeah we're able to do all kinds of cool stuff and you're giving a lot of money to charity charity that we gave away baskets to 300 turkeys we gave away uh, uh i've given away shirts laptops uh to mexico i sent uh kids uh close to mexico so yeah we're also heavily involved because when you were you're able to when you're put in this position, it's important to always give back. We were able to sponsor a professional fight right there with uh, uh with RGB with King uh, uh, Rosado. So you see the TCO right there. We've been in, you know, involved in the professional fighting world. Uh, not, I don't fight, obviously. I mean, I can fight, but I don't fight these guys. But uh, we've been able to do a lot of cool things and, and sponsor to guys like this. And he's fought Canelo. He's fought Mayweather. He's fought a lot of people. So you know, just very blessed to be able to have be involved in, in a lot of things like this. I, I own a horse too, uh, Zeus. Uh, I love I love the hell out of him. That's my boy. oh, that's my that's my boy Zeus. He's uh, mm. he's from Holland. He's imported from Holland. One of the most uh, wow. known expensive horses in the world. Uh, they're 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 show horses. And that's like he's only four. He still got a few year more years Jeez. to go. He'll be Look a he's, massive he's, horse. In person, he's huge. Look like in person, he's really really big. So you know we get to have a lot of that fun and travel and do that kind of stuff. So it's pretty fun. I can't complain. Ugh. So. You've got so we've got the cars. We spent we spent a bunch of money on cars. <laughs> a lot of money on cars. But I still like the what house. What do you man. have? What about you, Matt? Um, what about you? Let's see here. I got. Uh, I can't get over that video you did with uh, with Jordan with the with the Lamborghini with the green Lamborghini. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> love that one. I freaking love that one. I uh, I'm I'm I'm. Uh, that was one of my best videos. That's right in the middle of the pandemic. So we got we got the Rolls Royce. I think you're talking about the uh, the video here. I don't know if I don't know if it's really accessible right up top, but yeah, no, uh, it's not. No, it's a long time ago. It was a long it time. It was ago. like a couple of years ago, but but uh, yeah, it's uh, the, the, the things that we've done in business. Great sports cards. I, I'm I'm into sports cards, sports card investing. You know, but uh, there's this, there's not there's nothing like having a house, man. So this 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 is my per inside my house. We have a personal trainer, Milton. He cooks. He, he, he was, uh, this is a Sunday night after our Sunday night Zooms. 
Uh, there's uh, Milton. Yeah, that Milton. big old kitchen. That's celebrity kitchen right there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, as, that's as big as my closet. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's huge. That kitchen was big. That was in Chicago. That's right. That's right. Which we sadly no longer have that home. By, by the way, trying to find a home, trying to find the same similar home here in Dallas. Oh, you'll find it. It's yeah, it's it's, it's coming. I, I it's funny. You got the cash, you got the credit, you know. Now you want to move, and the realtors say, "Well, we don't have the house you're looking for." I said, "What is it? Come? We don't. Nobody wants to sell their house right now. Crazy. And, there, and there's a bidding war. So, so crazy. Yeah, it's nuts, man. But, but it's, yeah, it's, I mean, it's such a blessing to be able to, you know, at the at the same time, like my cousin. I have I'm the oldest cousin on my mom's side, right? And um, when my cousins come over to their house to the house, um, I'm lucky. I'm lucky to not not a single one of my cousins is a deadbeat, um, and but, but you lead that, you lead that, you know, like you lead that. I believe that you lead that. I'm like their older brother and they come to my house and I live in a gate. I live in the Beverly Hills of Bakersfield. And, you know, they come to the house and they just, you can just tell if they're proud and they're just like, yeah. I can't believe that one of my cousins live. It's very hard. The area is called Seven Oaks Grand Island where I live. Extremely hard to move, to move there uh, because there's never houses. They don't, it doesn't grow. It doesn't grow. It, it's it, it, whatever houses they made, that's what's staying there. Yeah. And, um, and uh, my cousin's just like, you know, having to say my name at the gate to the gatekeeper coming from a small town, Woo! you know, like, well, who are you here to see? Ricardo Aguilar, Hello. you know, or Eric Aguilar. And, 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 and the, you know, the beautiful thing about this, this the, the success is not just the money that you make or the people that you're able to help or the families or the charity. It's the fact that your, your family believes that can happen for them too. And then they break the chains for their, because I can't, I have cousins, but I can't do anything for them as far as building a legacy for them. I could build mm -hmm. a legacy for me and I can help them, but I, there's only so much I can do. So knowing that you're breaking those mental chains from family members subconsciously, such a beautiful thing. So when they come in, my uncles come to the house or whatever, they're just like, we're so proud of you. We're happy for you. And then to the, see my, my cousins striving to be better. I have a couple of them in the military. I have a couple of them uh, in the pipeline work, or, you know, um, you know, obviously a couple of them have taken the wrong path because also the family that I come from, but for the majority uh, them seeing that it's such a beautiful thing, and those are those are the secondary things that you don't realize are going to happen. Those, that, that's secondary. That is, those are things that you don't. Ex those are things that you don't expect. You don't expect to be like the cousin that everybody's who's they want to. Oh, everyone wants to go to your house, yep. or that everybody admires, or that's my cousin. You don't think that's going to happen. You don't. You don't ever. That, that's not part of your business plan when you first start your business. It's not something that is not even on your on your goals. You just want to make it. Then when you yep. finally do, you start to see the secondary benefits that you never even imagined, which were your family admires you, your family respects you, and they want to be like you, and you set the tone for that. Those are things that yep. you never imagined a million years would happen. I, I want to share this with you guys. This is the largest life insurance policy has ever sold. These are the largest wow. shift years because because no, but go 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 higher, go higher, right? But higher, higher. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go five, four, three, two, one. Oh, you're going for the, for, okay, got it, got it, got it. Number five, okay? Yes. We're in a life insurance business, so it's kind of exciting when you see stuff like this. That that's, And for those of you that's in real estate, some of you guys that's in mortgages, you guys that's in, in Bitcoin or crypto or, or, or some form of other financial services, and credit repair, uh, taxes. This is the this is the upside, massive potential to our opportunity. Number five, second to die life insurance policy. Usually for a estate planning type of case, insurance sold a ten million dollar insurance policy to a couple of multiple businesses involving real estate and technology. Million dollar policy um, had an dollars, so the fifteen million dollar policy. Uh, I want to a big deal. You. Not that big. Not big. Not big deal, right? Uh, number so so we, we we had we had somebody in uh, through our agency buy a uh, twenty three million dollar policy so it probably rank here at three point five PHP we, so if this was like a Guinness Book of World Record PHP would be in between three and four <clears throat> but number three sold the policy of forty one million imagine Ricky you sell it to one of these uh, uh, Mexicano uh, celebrities at forty one million dollars that's insane that's freaking insane I can't even believe it I'm such disbelief right now. So, so back back to the whole thing that uh, what do you think they're doing this for? Is, is it just for the that's, that's the question. Because Why? these people are already multimillionaires. 
Why so, in the world a multimillionaire will buy such a big policy? Well, because there is other benefits that majority of us, we don't know. Yeah. Majority of people in my family, we didn't know about those benefits. There are extra benefits on buying those big policies. So, so one of them is uh, this guy bought it because of debt, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, bought yeah, it for debt. Makes sense. Okay. okay. Um, this one bought it because of what they call survivorship life insurance. So two people, two people have to die to to uh, have the beneficiary receive the, the ten million dollar payout. Uh, income replacement. So it's, there's in these three policies, there's three different reasons why people buy life insurance. Correct. Debt payoff, income replacement, and and estate planning. Second to die. Okay. Let's go to number two. <laughs> uh, number two, Silicon Valley, two hundred. <laughs> Two hundred one million dollar policy, man. Two hundred. By the way, I don't think it's gonna say over there in the report the main reason why these multimillionaires are buying these policies. It's an unnamed billionaire. Yeah. Right. Why it's will a billionaire I they, buy? I think they said he was in Silicon Valley, if I'm not mistaken. Or was it the first yeah, recently, one? Yeah. Uh, down here. No, the first one, the number one, because you want to remember number two. I think number one was a guy in Silicon Valley. Okay, so let's go to number one. Okay, so check this out. Uh, this is a, a tax and estate plan attorney. Powell took a massive plan to ensure that his family would have enough money to continue to pay taxes generated by Powell's Pal assets. So this is, uh, probably, see, here's the thing. People think that by having a paid off house, you're good. No, you got to pay probate and, and, and estate taxes and whatnot. And, and in property taxes. And property tax, yeah. Because even if you have the property or not, even if there's no debt on the house, you still have to pay maintenance and property taxes. Yep. yep. Okay, number one. Here's number one. Number two, two freaking A, man. That's insane. Yeah, see, it's a guy. It's a guy in. No, 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 no. I need to disclose it. It was me, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yes. For double August. Right. Yeah. Tell him, tell him. It was me. me Milo and Enzo are going to be set up, man. You wanna okay, I'm me? sorry. I didn't want to let you guys know, but it was me. <laughs> I'm, 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 up for, I'm up for adoption if you want. Just so you know. <laughs> okay, check this out. How many points did you write this in this policy? 6.1 6 million. million points. <laughs> <laughs> What's the payout on that, Matt? Can we actually get the payout on that? I, I mean, I mean, you, you figure, you know, it's a hundred percent. You're at a hundred percent kind of tradi the traditional agency, a hundred percent, hundred ten, hundred twenty percent. Six million dollar commission. Six million dollar commission. The, the challenge for this agent is servicing the client because I think this the client already retired, <laughs> or this agent already retired. I would have. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> no, brother, with your expenses, that's enough. Yeah, you're, you're right. right. You're need right. more. You need Zeus more. alone is very expensive. He's like having so, a child. So I want to know, uh, as, we wrap up the, as we wrap up this podcast, Matt, give me one of your agents. Because, you know, listen, leadership is known by the fruit that it, that it, uh, that it kicks out. G give, me a, give me a success story. I got a recent success story of an agent that I want to bring up. But I, what's a recent success give you for one. a new agent of yours? Yeah, go ahead. I'll give you one. Okay, so I'm not going to give you Boris just got paid $63,000 as month or Marcelo, my brother. I'm going to give you this lady. <clears throat> Her name is Kathy. I, I hope you're, you're listening to me. Her name is Kathy. Kathy, police officer, 20 years over here in the in the Department of, uh, a, 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 in the department of a Police Officer Department over here in Houston, okay? He retired. She comes to the office. I said, she was, she was selling Mary Kay. She was selling Mary Kay. So she retired from police department. She was working in Mary Kay. Said, why don't you get your license? I'm coaching, I'm teaching her. She started building the business. She became a marketing director with me. We paid her last month, $23,000. Wow. Yes. yes. Wow. And wow. she keeps yes. coming up. You're going to hear her name. She's going to make six figures, 250, half a million. This lady, I believe that she's going to do something great. Uh, um, um, she retired, police officer, making $23,000 a month. Amazing. That's insane. That's insane. I, I, you know, I got, I got plenty of guys that I can tell you guys that, you know, that you guys, that you guys know that are making $20,000, $30,000 a month that are working with me directly. I, those stories are easy to tell, but let me, I want to share one in particular with you guys. Um, I have this couple that used to work for a traditional company, right? Traditional company as well. No leadership, no guidance, no nothing. She hits me up on Instagram. And she says, uh, we're looking for leadership and you're who, you're who we want to work with, you and your wife. Uh, she is, uh, man, I hope I get it right. She's either Palestinian or Pakistani, one or the other. Um, uh, 
pa- there's so Pal- Pakistan, I think she's either Pakistan. from Palestine or Pakistan. I'm not 100. percent I don't remember okay. exactly where but her husband is Puerto Rican. But the point is, she's Middle Eastern. Young couple, very good looking couple. These guys could be models. We meet with them. Um, they haven't even been with us. I don't. I, they haven't been riding with us more than five months. They have to. They, they can't be more than five months. The most their contract with the previous company was, believe it or not, 10 percent salary with 10 percent commission. In four months, they made 85 grand with us in four months. They're about to cross over six figures in less than six months. They're unofficial marketing managers, brokers of the company about to become official in the month of February. And those are the stories that fire me up. Why? Because the guys have been with us for a couple of years. Yeah, they're going to make their 20, 30,000 a month. No problem. 40, 50,000. It's the newest ones. They both were scared left their jobs. They say, we trust you. They're not even here locally. They're in Arizona. So we trust you. Guide us. And I'm talking about somebody that joined us the second half of 2021. I could tell you stories of guys been with us for a long time. That's not going to do you anything. If you're somebody that's not with us yet, or you're watching this podcast and you're interested in insurance, me telling you about a guy that's been with us for a couple of years is not going to do nothing for you. But if I tell you that in the second half, later half of 2021, somebody joined our firm, because of the leadership, the coaching that we have here made 85 grand in four months. That should tell you that you can do it. Yep. That should tell you that you can do it. So that's our, that's one of my recent success stories that we've had because they're new came in and just freaking killed it. We're so proud of them right now. And, and the Love biggest it. benefit, they're entering an industry where they're not having to be dependent upon lead generation, buying no. leads, uh, direct mail, the ways that the traditional insurance industry coaches you to build your business or not say that your business, your practice. Yes. How about you, Matt? How about you? I got Jamal Akbar. Jamal Akbar comes across. He just he literally sent me a text. Apparently, we just got paid right now. It's, it's Wednesday, so this is usually around the time that <laughs> our coaches start updates. But uh, super proud of Jamal and Alicia Akbar, the first $100,000 income earners in Ohio out of Cincinnati under the leadership of, uh, of the Musgroves. Under Autumn Moore, and then there's the Akbars. They just literally got an office. They've been business, business office, Zoom, new marketing directors, ticked off that nobody suggested a name. They're going to run a million dollar agency next year. Super got, super got chip on their shoulder. They want to prove a lot of people wrong. First step, check mark is they already crossed over 100,000. So Jamal, Alicia Akbar, if you guys are hearing this, uh, I'm super proud of you guys. $101,000 in income, five months as a marketing director since July, five months, making over $100,000 a year. No financial services background uh, period. So if you're coachable, you're aligned, you want, you're willing to learn and willing to grow, this is it. So as I wrap up, Ricky, I know we didn't get into your, your favorite topics here in this podcast. Okay. And I know you get into it in the, in the Valley Tamer podcast, but- Oh, I sure uh, will. Yeah, I sure you will. So uh, final thoughts, man, as we launch off into 2022, you know, what, what's your final message here uh, at this podcast as it relates to getting off your year to a quick start and making sure that 2022 is the beginning of the greatest years of financial life. Um, I will tell you this. Um, despite what the news tells you, despite what the conversation are having at your scary ass uncle and aunt's house, was scared of everything, scared of dying, scared of COVID, scared of politicians, despite whatever you're reading on the newspaper, despite whatever propaganda the media is trying to shove down your throat, despite whatever your favorite politician is telling you, (laughs) despite whatever your pastor is telling you, despite all of that, we are living in the greatest time, in the greatest time, in the greatest era in history. We're We're within the greatest country that has ever existed. We're within the greatest company that has ever existed in financial services. And I'm not talking simply from bias that our numbers are showing you we're growing at a higher rate than either insurance company or financial marketing organization company. I want you to know that whether you're with us or we're not, 2022 can be the year that you can look back and say to yourself, that's the year I made a decision. And that where you can literally date back when you're 40, 50 years from now talking to your kids and your grandkids about how your last name became to be a respected last name that you can date back to this year. That you can say, I remember in 2022, early 2022, I made a decision to 
not listen to the media, to not listen to my negative family, to not, to let go of some of my old habits, not for you to be perfect. You to be perfect. God knows me to run for it matters. are not perfect. We make a lot of mistakes. But as long as you make a decision and you stay consistent with it, that, that 20, 30, 40 years from now, you can go back on the calendar to this day, month, and say that was a day. And, 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 and you can look back and say to yourself, I am so grateful. My good friend Marvin Del Valle, which we were on this tour, Rodolfo came in a couple of days later. Uh, Rodolfo was on this one too, but he came two days later on this tour. I have this picture here with me that we did in 2018. This was 19, 620, 2019. Marvin Del Valle and me had a conversation. I'm going to share what he told me with you. Uh, that. I, I can't quote it word for word, but I'm going to give you the idea to all of you guys listening. I said, Marvin, out of your experience in life, what is something that I can take away from you after we're done with this trip? Or now that we're getting ready to part ways give me something. I like fed for people that are wiser than I am. And I like to have like last comments from them. And he says, Ricky, you know what the greatest strategy and tra uh, tragedy in life is? I said, no, Marvin, tell me what it is. That you are in the greatest moment and the greatest opportunity of your life and you can't see it. <laughs> and you can't identify it. Let me tell you something right now to you that are listening. You are in the greatest time of your life with the greatest opportunity in your life. And the greatest tragedy will be if you miss it. But the greatest decision you'll ever make is if you can identify where you are right now and run with that and be grateful that you're around the group of people, either you're with us or you're not, that want to see you grow, that want to see you prosper, that don't care what your religion, your sexual orientation, your political views are. They just want to see you be an example to you and your family, that you're around the people, a group of people that are genuinely wanting to change the world and make a difference. If you can identify that, I can't even begin to put in words the beautiful life, fulfilled life you are going to live because the greatest of years of your life are yet to come. They are not behind you. That's my message to everyone Woo! listening today. Phenomenal. Love it. Phenomenal. Awesome, Ricky. Rodolfo, your last thoughts, brother. Well, great way to finish the podcast uh, with Ricky today. Um, I, I tell everybody, I think that this podcast is getting better and better, Matt. Um, I tell everybody, you know what's, what today? Today is what? The 12th? You know what's a good thing to tell you in a phrase for everybody? Because of time, today is a great day to recommit to your, uh, what do you call it? Resolutions. A lot of people forgot about the resolutions, right? Their goals and their dreams, everything that they say January 1st. Yeah. And many people already forgot about it. So I'm going to be the person I'm going to remind you about your resolution. Losing weight. Uh, making as much money that people say they were going to make, becoming whatever promotion they say they were going to be doing. Today is a great day to recommit to your resolutions. That's my message, Matt. That's it. Listen, my, I'm very simple. Make sure in 2022, if you're going to quit something, quit quitting. Quit quitting, especially when the times get tough, especially when your friends and family, like what Ricky was talking about earlier, don't believe in your vision and your decision making. When people don't think that coming from a different country, you can't speak English, that uh, you should maybe quit this or you should do something else that's a little easier. Listen, if you're going to quit something in 2022, quit quitting. Do not make, do not making quitting when tough gets, when, when the times get tough, do not make quitting a habit. Because then you have, you, you don't even know it, but you're going through a blood transfusion. Instead of champion's blood in your veins, now you have quitter's blood in your wow. veins. And how you do one thing is how you do everything so that being said guys um, i'm excited for a couple of things uh we've got our mid-year events coming up here in less than three weeks uh, uh rodolfo and, and, and uh vargas and i uh wtp and i'm saying we're hosting an event out in uh, daytona beach florida we got the hodge twins we got uh, uh I, I, I was always about to let the cat out of the bag but i know i realized we already did we got Dion sanders coming out we got uh, uh et uh, Eric, uh, preacher, hip hop preacher coming out. We got Tom Hegna. We got uh, Sandy Bodkin. We got Garrett Gunderson. We got Patrick with David coming out. Ricky, where's your event being held for TGA? Ours is going to be at Vegas, the MGM, the M. We're excited to be there. We're excited to have you guys with there. We're going to be there in the month of February. If you're interested, send us a DM and we'll make sure to get you a couple of tickets and get you inside with us. 100%. If you haven't done so, make sure you follow Ricardo underscore TCO. Is that correct? Uh, yes. uh, uh, Ricardo under, underscore T dot C dot. Oh, there's a fake page out there. Don't follow it. It has another underscore after it. It's scamming people for Bitcoin. That is not me. Yours too. 
Yeah. They're always doing pages of me, bro. It's so crazy. People are obsessed. Yep. Yep. Make sure you, you follow our actual page that we have our actual live stories on. And make sure you have announced already. Make sure you follow Rodolfo Vargas Oficial on Instagram. That being said, guys, I'm your money smart guy. And from Dallas, Texas, here's a completion of episode 34. See us next week. Same time, same channel here for episode 35 at 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. And uh, we got more to cover on that episode. That being said, guys, on behalf of Ricardo, on behalf of Rodolfo Vargas, I'm your money smart guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart. Continue to love smart and be mighty smart today. God bless you guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.